This video is about identifying, uh, differentiating staph, staphylococcus versus streptococcus. Both of these bacteria are gram uh, positive, so if you did a gram stain, both of them would come out to be uh, purple, and uh, which is gram positive. Staphylococcus will show up as grape-like clusters, and that's what uh, staph is uh, referring to. And streptococcus usually comes up in these long chains, and that's what strep is referring to. So the arrangement of the cells is a little bit different, but they're both uh, gram-positive cells, so they would stain um, purple with crystal violet. And because of the cell wall, the stain would remain in that thick peptidoglycan wall. So the first test uh, we do to differentiate between, between the two is called a catalase test. Um, catalase is an enzyme that breaks down hydrogen peroxide. So this is hydrogen peroxide. If you do have the enzyme catalase, you're able to break down this hydrogen peroxide and in the process you produce a gas which is oxygen and you produce a couple of uh, water molecules H2O. Uh, so this is if you have the enzyme catalase. If you do not have the enzyme catalase you cannot go through this chemical reaction and you cannot break down hydrogen peroxide. So the catalase test does just that. Um, catalase test. We know that staph staph have the catalase enzyme, while strep uh, do not. So if we have a mystery organism and we're trying to figure out if it's staph or strep, the first thing we do is a catalase test. Um, we, we place a, a little smear of cells on the surface of a glass slide, a couple of drops of hydrogen peroxide. If we see bubbling, that's the oxygen uh, gas forming in the liquid water. So if we see bubbling, then the um, uh, we would see bubbling on the surface of the slide. Bubbling means it's a positive reaction. So if we have a catalase test and we get bubbles, that means we have a positive reaction. So we determine that we have staph microorganism. If we do not see bubbles, then we do not have staph. So we have a strep, if we're trying to identify between the two. Okay, so that's the catalase test. The next test we do is uh, we're going to concentrate on the staphs. Now that we know we have a staph, let's identify um, the strains of staph. We have uh, two types of strains we can identify from, Staphylococcus aureus or Staphylococcus epidermidis. Uh, they have different properties and we're going to use that to our advantage to identify which one we have. So let's talk about the mannitol test and the coagulase test. So both of these tests that I'm going to talk about are to differentiate a staph aureus from staph epidermidis. So what we do know is that staph aureus, this strain of staph, has an enzyme that staph epidermidis doesn't have, and it's called coagulase. 
coagulase. And what coagulase does is it catalyzes an enzymatic reaction uh, that turns plasma into little uh, clumps, coagulating clumps. Um, so in the presence of coagulase, plasma will clump up and will coagulate. So you will see kind of like precipitation. Uh, if you create a smear of cells and you add a couple of uh, a smear of cells, so if the cells are staph aureus cells, they have coagulase in them, you add a couple drops of plasma on top of the cells, and you swirl gently the slide and you will see coagulation taking place. It looks kind of like um, um, curdled milk. It's, it's not so thick, but you'll see these little precipitates in, in that uh, milky formation. Instead of a smooth milky formation, the smear of cells, you have little speckles in, in that. So if you do have a positive coagulase test, taking place, co coagulase. If the test is positive, then you have a staph aureus. So if you see uh, specs, if the test is negative, which means the smear is very smooth and you don't really see any specks in it, then you have a staph epidermitis. All right, but there is another, um, there's another test that we can do to confirm Staph aureus from staph epidermitis, and it's called the mannitol test. Mannitol is a sugar, so I'm actually going to use a color here. Mannitol is a sugar, and if it's used by the cells, so we have to have the <clears throat> proper enzyme to do that, <clears throat> if the cell can ferment. Uh, mannitol, then we're going to have a um, we're going to have acids formed uh, acids uh, this is the result of most uh, sugar breakdown and fermentation so acids um, <clears throat> and uh, in uh, the medium, in the mannitol test, we also have a color indicator uh, in the form of phenol red. So in, in, in that test, we have phenol red uh, color indicator. Uh, when the pH drops, so when the pH drops, the uh, phenol red uh, turns to yellow. Okay. So uh, we so only certain cells can do that. So let me add this. Only staph aureus again, aureus can ferment uh, can ferment mannitol. So if there's mannitol food in, in, uh, in the medium and the cells, that's the food they have, 
only Staph aureus will be able to break down this mannitol and create these acids as a result of the fermentation, uh, which will drop the pH. Right? These are consequences. Acids are formed, pH drops. When the pH drops, the color indicator goes from red to yellow. So as you're doing this mannitol test, uh, Staph aureus will, will, uh, here, <laughs> will be positive as opposed to Staph epidermitis will be negative when we do a mannitol test. So mannitol tests, we're basically plating, we're going to be plating these uh, mystery cells. We know they're staph, but we don't know which strain. So these mystery cells are going to be plated on a mannitol plate. The mannitol plate uh, ha has a specific sugar, mannitol sugar, that is only uh, fermented by staph aureus. Staph epidermitis don't have the proper enzyme to break down that sugar. So we put these cells on the mannitol plate. We add a, um, a color indicator that happens to be red. And uh, in the acidic environment that is produced from the fermentation of the mannitol, the pH drops and it turns that color indicator from red to yellow. And that's a visible indication that the test was positive when we have these acids that are turning the color indicator from red to yellow. And that is indication that we have Staph aureus. Okay, so I will create an <clears throat> another video to go through the uh, tests we conduct to identify the different strains of streptococci. Okay, so this is done for this one.